Um, we're just having a wee chat here, and this will uh, be of interest to you if you've got uh, daughters or you have uh, yourself what, what determined what you chose to study at school, because we're talking about sexism and stereotypes when it comes to subjects. Yeah, you'll find that there are fewer girls taking an interest in the sciences than men and actually lagging behind them in, in many ways as well, according hmm. to this new report. OK, this report says that the UK is in the bottom five uh, of uh, the world, I think it was. Dr Emily Grossman uh, is here now to tell us about her experience uh, of all of this. So, what is the difference between boys and girls when it comes to the sciences? Well, much fewer girls, far fewer girls, are studying science still. And I believe one of the main reasons is that girls suffer from what's called imposter syndrome, which starts at a really young age where girls underestimate their abilities. They think if they did well, it was just because it was an easy exam or they had help. So they're really suffering from confidence. And that's in an environment where maths and sciences have traditionally always been seen as subjects more for boys. And yes, that was a long time ago, but we're still suffering from that. 150 years ago, women were being told that their skulls were too small to house a powerful brain, that really? their brain was too soft yeah. for rigorous study. Well, why, and, why, and, and Emily, <laughs> why is it then we have more women GPs, for instance, than we do men? Well, women do struggle in an environment where it's really competitive. Now, perhaps GPs are not having to put themselves forward as much in a competitive industry, but certainly in a school environment, the girls that I tutor that come from mixed schools, which is a much more competitive environment, particularly where they're taught by men, are being really pushed to succeed in a way that's not nurturing and supportive, and a lot of them sit at the back and don't put their hands up because they're scared to get it wrong. So there's no physiological reason why girls and boys cannot be absolutely identical in achievement in science. Absolutely there is not. absolutely no absolutely reason not. physiologically. It's, it's all about how they feel about their abilities and whether they're encouraged and supported in a nurturing way by the teaching environment and also by their parents. The opinions that are put into them by their parents, a lot of women are still saying to their daughters, oh, don't worry, I can't do maths either, I, you know, I'm a bit rubbish at and, science. And I just feel the passion coming through from you that you're speaking from experience here and yeah. I just want to point out how top this woman is. She is an expert in molecular biology and genetics, a triple first in natural sciences from Queen College Cambridge doesn't stop there and a PhD in cancer research so we need scientists uh, who are doing this work that you're doing no matter if they're boys or girls but particularly we need to get that girl Absolutely. And I was really lucky. I went to an all-girls school. I was really supported. I was really nurtured. I had no idea that science and maths weren't as much for girls as for boys. But when I went to university, to Cambridge, I went to study physics. And for the first time, I was surrounded by mostly boys. All the yeah. teachers were boys. What is your message? And they left, like, like, my confidence left. went down the drain. What is your message boys, to girls? To keep studying it, to know that it's for you, it's for everybody. Science and maths is for everybody, not just for boys. Top woman. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, look, she should be a she should be a political yeah, leader. Yeah, should be doing the party uh, debate. <laughs> she should. Yeah. And we're going to talk about who's not doing the party debates right after this. Don't go away.